well, it's things that move are cool, right? Why do we watch like kung fu movies or why is ballet a thing? We want to see how things and people move and animals move. Um, seeing a machine do it just combines engineering with that kind of interest. It's the coolest thing ever. I, uh, I don't know that robotics was my passion. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff. Did uh, some programming for medical image analysis back in the early 2000s and then uh, before that had a philosophy degree and so I, I like interesting things and robotics is currently the most interesting thing that I, I know of. We have a video of that. We, that's we true. Have, we have the workout video from uh, three years ago. Yeah, I guess my question is why would we build a robot that would squat, bench press, or dead, you know, deadlift? I don't know. But I guess it can. I mean, if it's going to be picking up boxes and moving them around, then some of those same motions could be other things too. I guess it can. Yeah. I would argue that we already have that video out. You can link to it. So it's actually being built right now. Like literally, we're, we're in an undisclosed location here uh, because the rest of the space is filled with robots that have heads and hands. You know, the question is always, why would I build a robot with heads and hands? Why are they asking that? Who needs a head for picking up a box and moving it? Actually, there are pretty good reasons for it. And um, I don't know, in our head, what do we have? We've got antennas up there, uh, Wi-Fi and GPS and 5G. We've got a couple of additional sensors up there. But also it's like a, a safety uh, um, feature for the robot where a pair of animated eyes, it kind of tells the person who's looking at it what the robot's about to do. It's actually really useful. So it's a pragmatic interface. But I'm curious to know, I think most people just want these to look like a human. But uh, we want to build robots that are actually human-centric and useful in the world to do things with and around humans. And there's a difference. Is everybody going to have a robot like Digit in their homes? No. I don't think so. Yes, I definitely think so. Really? Yeah. When? It'll be a while. Okay. Certainly someday, it's been a dream of humanity forever to have Rosie the Robot or that kind of thing. Just even before uh, people had electric motors and things like that, people were thinking about automatons. Um, so it's definitely, and it is definitely possible. There's no question that it's possible. Yeah, I think the, this is perhaps colored by the older I get, the less stuff I want to own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you have a smartphone, right? Sure. And that's the thing that does lots of different things for you, and uh, you use it pretty consistently because of all the different features it has. But I think that might make the point. Uh, you know, so I also have an Xbox, but you know, there is a subscription service that I could sign up for via Microsoft where I actually wouldn't own it, but it's part of a, you know, effectively I have access to it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the, you know, the view that I have that's maybe evolved a little bit over the last couple of years here is it matters more about access than it does about literally the sense of ownership specifically. Uh, my stance is nope. Yeah, Agility Robotics will not allow, um, to the best of our ability, any sort of weapons or offensive capability or any of our robots to be violent in any way. It's just not a thing we want to do. Even defensive violence, it's just not, uh, not of interest. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a, you know, something we worked on with Boston Dynamics and other robotics companies uh, last spring was, you know, figuring out sort of an initial public stance on this for, for companies that share this view. And, uh, you know, it, our view is that robots have so much good to do for the world that it, it damages at best and prevents that at worst if they're used for non-good purposes. Oh, robots are gonna be the only and best solution for last mile logistics. Um, it's gonna take a while. The barrier to it is not complexity. I mean, that was one of the earliest things that we did. It's actually you know, very easy for the robot to walk outside uh, because it's actually, uh, in many ways, simpler to move through than an indoor environment because there's less stuff to run into. But the safety stuff pops back up. So the, you know, the provable safety stuff, functional safety, how you interact with the public and all that gains, it, that, that's the hard part, much more so than can you literally do the job. Also, um, the last 50 feet delivery to the doorstep is the second problem after you have autonomous vehicles that are commonplace. As soon as autonomous vehicles just exist and you can either buy one or you know, companies are creating them for this purpose, um, then it's a, a lot more feasible.